Hey guys, it's Anna here. In last video, I did that cute macrame chandelier link up there, which was really quite advanced. So for today's project, I thought I would go the other way and make something super simple. I know that there are many of you that are following this channel, watching my videos that have never tried macrame before. And from the comments I've read before that you're maybe a little bit hesitant to try it out. You know, you're not sure if you've got the skills. Well, this project is for you. It is really simple, yet it will make a nice mid-size wall hanging. Well, Maybe for my yeah, sizes, it's still a little bit smaller, but still, it's not just a small keychain or something like that. And you will get to try all the three basic macrame knots. And I'll make sure that I'm explaining everything in detail with all the tips and tricks that I can think of. One quick note before we get started, my Patreon page is launching on May 27th. If it is after that date, you can already find the link in the description. I am so excited and very much hard at work preparing all the pictures and videos and updates for you guys. And of course, thinking about all the right tiers and the benefits that would get you excited to join my Patreon club. So please write down that date. I will be launching a video in those few days to welcome you to my Patreon and introduce all of the tiers and everything. So watch out for that. Now let's talk about the supplies you will need for this super simple wall hanging. Now the list of supplies, just like the project is itself, is super simple as well. You need two things. Number one being a dowel rod. I'm using this one, which is 50 centimeters. You could use a piece of driftwood, but again, that would make the project just a little bit more advanced or complicated because when you're using pieces of driftwood, they usually have a little bit of wave to it or it's, it's, it's not a nice straight piece of dowel like this. And then number two is your cord. Now I will be using this one, which is a single twist cord in the color natural, and it's in the size of nine millimeters. It's one of the new cords that Bobini have launched a while back, and they were kind enough to send me this sample, and I'm really excited to see how it will be to work with these. I have worked with their braided nine millimeter cords, and that was a ton of fun. You can see the project I made with that there. Now, what I'm expecting from these is that they will be really easy to brush out for some nice fluffy fringe at the end. So let's see how that will work. And also in general, the nine millimeter cords, I think are really good for beginners because they are big, which means it's very clear for you to see what you're doing with the knots and it goes really fast, like really fast. You're able to build bigger projects, bigger pieces, um, because you know, the knots take up so much space because of the size of the cord. I, yeah, I think that makes sense to everyone. Um, so that, that would be my recommendation. You can of course do this project in other sizes as well. Just know that it will mean that the project will be a little bit smaller than this one. If you will still be doing the same number of knots across the first row. Other than those two supplies, you will need some sort of a measuring tape and scissors. Those are the essentials, but I think everybody has those at home. So that shouldn't be an issue. And the last thing that might be something you don't have at home, which is a clothing rack like this, which is what I use when I work on the wall hangings. Now I remember what I did first before I bought a, a clothes rack for doing macrame, I would take a hanger like this one, and then I would put just some random pieces of cord over it here, attach those to my dowel. So that would be down here attached to it. And then I would just hang this on our like console or whatever you call it, you know, what you have on the windows to hang your curtains. So I would work like that on my first couple pieces before I bought this. And I'm sure there are other ways how you could um, do this without having to purchase a clothing rack to work on this piece. And that is it. That's all the supplies and tools we need. So let's get started. I will start cutting my cords and then I will show you how I'm hanging them on the dowel rod and I'll tell you exactly how long all of them are, or rather you will find that in the description, but I will be talking a little bit more about the lengths of all the cords. So I've cut some of the cords and I'm ready to put them on. But first tip number one 
if you are using the dowel and some sort of these something like these s hooks it is a good idea to use some rubber bands and put them on the sides that will help to prevent the dowel from sliding off the s hooks so that's your tip number one and now let me show you how i'm going to use the lark's head knot to put the cords on the dowel so i've got that very first cord here i put the ends of the cord together so that this makes the middle then that middle is going over the dowel and back here it creates this little loop through which we're going to pull the two cords like that and that's the lark's head knot now there is a great tip right here as well if you're working with long cords like these ones, you can make the Lark's head knot in your hand first. So you have the middle, kind of loop it down like this, create that loop there, grab the two cords in the middle, then you can let go of this hand and pull it out right here. And you can see you've got the Lark's head knot right here and the two cords going through it. And now you just Put it on the dowel like this and then tighten this definitely speeds up the process if you're working with long cords So I've got all the 14 cords up in the same way using the Lark's head knot. And now let's talk a little bit about the lengths. I've read comments before where you said that macrame seems like a very expensive hobby for you because the cords are quite expensive. And it, it is true that the premium cords like the brand Bobini and others are not uh, a, a cheap thing. But there are ways how you can save a lot of the cord if you work smartly or rather if you cut <laughs> smartly because you're aware of how the pattern is going to work. So what I've done here is the middle cords, these two, they are the longest. And you will see that when you look at the description, the first two cords in there are the longest ones. They're the two in the middle. Because the pattern we will be making is this sort of an arrow, I need the middle cords to be the longest. And then it goes always in pairs. So the next two on this side and on this side, they are a little bit shorter than the two and two here. Again, a little bit shorter. And then the shortest ones are the two that are on the very ends. And it will probably make more sense as we actually make the pattern or you've seen the some some thumbnail so you know what the finished uh, project looks like um so yeah the these ones are going to be making the fewer knots so we don't need a lot of cord here but the ones in the middle is where we do need the length now if you just want to make things easy for yourself just go with the longest length and cut all 14 in that length and you'll just have everything equal and that will be it but you will be then trimming quite a bit on the ends. Now for the pattern, like I said, it will be this sort of arrow shape. And first we're gonna do a lots of square knots. So square knots, then alternating them to create this sort of a shape. So I'll start here on the very left. I'm taking the leftmost cord, putting it over the two cords in the middle, then taking the right cord out of the four, looping that over the cord we've just used underneath it and then behind the two cords in the middle and then out through this loop here and then when i'm tightening it i make sure i'm holding down on the two middle cords to make a really nice tight first half of the square knot then for the second half we need to do the same thing but from the other side so first the right cord creates a loop the left cord goes over it underneath it behind the two cords in the middle and out through this loop 
and again, tighten, making sure the two cords in the middle are nice and tight there. There's no extra space. Good. That is a giant knot. <laughs> okay. Moving on, next set, again, the same thing. Over, creating a loop behind the two in the middle, out of here to create the first loop of that square knot, the first half, and then the second half, second side, out the loop, and tighten. You can see I'm really making sure that there is no space left in those middle cords. So I finished that first row. You can see all the knots are facing the same way because I was always starting with the left cord first. Now for the next row, what we're going to do is put the two cords on the very ends to the side because we are not going to be using those. And now it is the exact same thing like we did before. And what we're doing is we're creating alternating square knots, meaning they are the square knots between first two initial square knots. Now, what's important here is that as you're making this one, that you don't damage the ones that you did before. So you know how before I was really tightening those middle cords down there? Well, this time I'm being a lot more careful because if I pulled too much, I could damage those first square knots that I made. You can see how when I'm tugging on this, this is a little bit, um, you know, it's, it's changing shape a little bit. So I, I try not to do that too hard, um, but still making sure that there isn't a, a gap or that there isn't too much space left there. And this is how we will continue. So in each new row, we're going to remove the two leftmost cords until we get to just one square knot that will be right in the center. That is all the square knots done. Now the last part that I want to add is some double half hitch knots so that you can also learn this very basic macrame knot, which can be a little bit tricky for some people. But again, here, you know, super simple pattern. There is not much that can go wrong here. So to do the double half hitch, we will first do it right here along that line of square knots. So we're going to take our first cord that's on the very left, We'll take it into our right hand and we will not let it go from this right hand. And we will keep holding it in the direction to go right along those square knots. Now with our left hand, we will be making the double half hitch knots from all of these cords. So first taking the first one in the row, putting it behind that travel cord. Then you make a loop like this right here. You can put it over this cord actually, and then you grab it from behind and pull it through this loop to the front again. And you pull it tight like that. Now we do that one more time. So you can take the end like this as well, pull it over this cord and underneath and out through this loop. And you can see I'm holding this cord with my right hand the entire time and in that direction where I want the, the line of double half hitch knots to go. And now I've already taken the second cord and I'm doing the same thing with that as well. So just over, creating a few loops over the travel cord and tighten. Now down here from this last square knot, we had four cords, two of them we've put on here and two of them are waiting for the other side. So it should be exactly equal on both ends. Now here, when we go from this side, it will be the same thing, just opposite. 
So with my left hand, I'm taking the very the cord on the very end and I will not let it go from that hand. And with my right hand, I'm taking the next cord in line, making a loop over that travel cord, pulling the cord through the loop and tighten. Make it nice and tight right there. And then the second loop, again, tighten. And see how my left hand is still holding that cord, that travel cord, in the exact same direction, going right along those square knots to the left. And so now down here, we've got the two sides and we want to connect them. So we will choose one of these cords. It really doesn't matter which one of the two, but because I think these look prettier, these knots, I'm choosing this one to be the travel cord. So the one that came from the left side. So holding it in my right hand and then adding one more double half hitch knot from the cord that was the travel cord before. So the cord that runs through here, I'm doing another double half, double half hitch knot with it here. And that is it. And that really is the pattern. Now that double half hitch knot, I know it is really difficult for a lot of people. So if you're struggling with this here, I have put together a video with some tips and tricks specifically for the double half hitch knot out of which quick summary, I think really holding the travel cord in that one hand and not letting it go is what helped a lot of people. I've seen people in um, live classes as well. When I was teaching somebody, what was confusing them is they kept like switching their hands and putting them in different order and, and places and directions and whatever. So just stick to that travel cord with the one hand in the direction you want the knots to go and that should do the trick for you. Now there are a few finishing touches, um, or at least one, and that is trimming the bottom. So the plan is to make this sort of a trim to match this shape right here. And then I do want to brush out all of these to see how the nine millimeter in single twist is going to be easy or not easy to brush out. So a few tips for cutting the fringe. You can see that I'm actually sitting down so that I have it at nice eye level so I can really judge the lengths and, and you know, the even evenness of all of it, I guess if that's a word. Um, a golden rule for trimming is less is more, I think. You can always cut it more, but once you cut it, it's cut. You cannot add it back. So first, maybe cut it less. You could probably see that at first, what I did is I cut it straight, just to have a straight starting point, and then I started little by little um, cutting, cutting it more to that angular shape. Um, so now you know, I'm, I'm happy with that, but I could go in and trim it a little bit more if I saw that it needs that. So don't get excited, too excited with the trimming and rather go easy and slow at first. Now you could finish the project here. I think already like this, it looks really cool even with that fringe left like this and not brushed. The brushing is really an extra step and you will also need an extra tool for that and that is a brush. I'm always using this one in this triangular shape with these fine bristles on it, which I found works the best for any sort of fringe um, brushing for macrame. But still, this is going to take some time to brush it out. So really think before you start doing that, if you really want the brushed out fringe. You could of course use a different brush as well. I'm just using this one because that has worked the best. For this type of cord, I think what could also work really nicely is if you had like that really thin brush that's just like one line, lots of, you know, lots of spikes in one line and you would just start sort of here and brush it, you know, from the very top to the end because you can already see yeah, you know, just me running my fingers through it from the very top, how that's 
um, sort of splits the cord and almost brushes it out. So that could be quite easy, I think, as well. What I'm going to do is use this brush and I'll put this actually on a flat surface, surface on like my table probably, um, with something underneath so that I don't scratch my table with this and then just brush it all out and let's see how that looks. Full stop Can't believe I live in your thoughts I think about you all the time Morning, evening and midnight Such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything This is it. This piece is completely finished. And I have to say that fringe just adds a lot of fun to it for me. It makes it a lot more interesting, but it definitely took the longest time. Brushing out that fringe took longer than making the entire macrame part. I think this nine millimeter size still makes it easier to brush it out. And it definitely creates a lot of like volume in the fringe. So I think that's great but still it is a lot of work. So like I said, think twice whether you really want to have that fringe there. And I forgot to tell you guys in the beginning that this or something very similar was actually my first ever macrame piece, macrame project. So if you're going to redo this as your first macrame piece, you're going to start on a very similar journey like I did. And so I hope you had fun watching this tutorial. Please, if you have any questions to it, just leave them down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out if I can. And that is it for me today. I will definitely appreciate if you give this video a like or you know, whatever comment you want to put down there. All of that counts. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.